We've used the exponential form of a complex number to help us prove this cool result called de Moivre's theorem. And de Moivre's theorem all by itself is a very powerful result that we can use to help us simplify questions uh, and answer a whole bunch of different kinds of problems that were sort of inaccessible to us before. And this is a perfect example of that. So let's have a look at this and see how we can do it together. Find the minimum value of the positive integer m for which uh, root 3 plus i to the power of m is uh, real or purely imaginary. And then part b says uh, evaluate what root 3 to the plus i to the power of m equals for those values of m that we're about to find. So how do we go about this? Well, there's a, a few bits of sort of bedrock foundation we need to establish first, right? They're introducing to us uh, a variable m, which is a positive integer. Um, so the way that we would write that in notation is to say m belongs to uh, not just the set of integers, but the set of positive integers. So that little plus sign there is a way to, it's a shorthand way to indicate, all right, we're not just including all of the integers, we're including only the positive ones. Uh, to be distinguished between the, that and the natural numbers, like I said earlier uh, in a lesson a while ago, some people include zero in that, so um, we're excluding zero by saying that it's positive. And then secondly, um, we have this setup over here. So there is some complex number root three plus i, and then it's being raised to whatever this power m happens to be. And we wanna find the values for which it's real and purely imaginary. Now, even though the question doesn't suggest it, um, de Moivre's theorem is gonna be very useful here because you can see um, the whole point here is we're raising to a power, and de Moivre's theorem gives us a very easy way to simplify uh, you know, a complex number raised to a power. That's kind of its point, right? So here's the way I'm going to suggest we begin this. Uh, we want to get into uh, polar form because polar form, mod arg form, is what de Moivre's theorem is relevant to. So it's in rectangular form at the moment. So my first uh, port of call is to actually change this number from rectangular form into polar form. So let's do that. So I'm going to say um, if z is equal to root 3 plus i, then what is it equal to in mod arg form? Well, um, what I'm gonna suggest is that you start to get used to, especially for these numbers, which are clearly set up to, to give you nice values at the end, uh, a number like root 3 plus i, um, you're gonna become quite familiar with actually working out where this is and what its values are, both in rectangular and in polar form. So if I do a quick sketch of this, right? Um, root 3 is about uh, 1.7. So if I say, well, there's one and there's two, then uh, root three will be around here. And then uh, if I say that scale is one, so uh, here is where I'm gonna go, uh, I should have called that i actually. Uh, here's where I'm going to go, that's z equals root three plus i. And so I want to work out a modulus and an argument for this complex number. So you can see the modulus comes from here, that's our distance to the origin, so it lives in this right angled triangle, when the sides are one and root three, you can see the modulus is going to be the square root of uh, one plus three, which is four. So I'm gonna get the square root of four, which is two. Uh, and then I also want the argument, uh, and I'm writing here, you can see that capital A, just to remind you, is about the principal argument. Uh, this is the angle here that I'm interested in, right? So in this uh, one, uh, sorry, let's, let's, let's do it this way, uh, in this one, root three and two triangle, and um, this is an exact value, right? So it's clearly pi on six that I'm after. So now that I have the modulus and the argument, I can rewrite z in this form. I can say it's equal to two of cos pi on six plus i sine pi on six. All right, I've converted into polar form, and that allows me to use de Moivre's theorem to take this, the, the same complex number, raised to the power of m, and write it in a simpler way that will allow this question to be very easily solved. So let's go ahead and invoke de Moivre's theorem. I will say, by de Moivre's theorem, and uh, you can either you know, put the, the, quote the theorem before or after the line that involves it, I can say z to the power of m equals. All right, so z to the power of m uh, is going to raise this to the power of m, but it's going to multiply these arguments by m. So what I get is two to the power of m uh, times cos of, here comes to my theorem, cos m pi on six plus i sine m pi 
on six. So this is just the straight out use of De Meyer's theorem, but how is it useful um, to the actual question that they're asking us, right? Well, we wanna find when this thing, which is to say this, this long expression over here, when is it just real? Like what values of m, uh, as, as m changes, this number will change, um, but some particular values of m will make it real and some, of it will make, some values of m will make it purely imaginary. I want the minimum value, that's what I'm after, the minimum value for m that gives me a real result or a purely imaginary result. So let's now think about this uh, one at a time. Part one, for uh, z of m to be real, I should say purely real, uh, what I want is for there to be no imaginary component, right? In other words, I want the imaginary part, the imaginary part of z of m, I want it to be zero. But I actually know what the imaginary part of z to the power of m is because of how I wrote it up here, right? You can see this, this part here is going to be the imaginary part uh, z to the power of m. So I can just substitute that in, right? I can say um, that's sine of m pi on 6, I want that to be 0, okay? Now at this point here, um, it pays, you can see how often we've been doing this um, throughout this topic, uh, it really pays to be so like comfortable with your trigonometry that this part of the question um, doesn't require too much thought. But just to remind you of what I would be thinking and visualizing when I see an equation like this, um, sine of some angle equals 0, right? Well. Uh, there's a lot of different angles, an infinite number, in fact, of angles that if you take the sine of those, you will get zero. Let me show you what I mean. I mean, if we draw a graph of sine like so, it's pretty messy, but you get the idea. Um, I'll do the positive part, I'll also do this part for illustration. Um, you can see all of those spots where my sine graph intersects with the x-axis. Uh, in other words, here, 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 over here and here. Um, all of these values, sine of those angles will give me zero. So what, what are these values here, right? Well, hopefully uh, you know your sine graph well enough to say that because it's period, is 2 pi, that's a full copy of the graph, you can kind of infer all the rest of the values from there. So I'm going to say uh, m pi on 6 equals, at least off of the graph that I've got, obviously it goes uh, you know, to the left and to the right uh, to infinity, but I'm going to say dot dot dot, um, I've got negative 2 pi, I've got negative pi, I've got 0, I've got pi, I've got 2 pi, and it just keeps on going, right? Now, all of these will give me a value of zero when I take sine of them, but there's restrictions on m. Do you remember that? Um, up the top here, we said m is not just any number, it's a positive integer. So therefore, um, some of these values are, are irrelevant to me, right? Um, namely, these ones in here. These guys here, you can't find a positive integer m that will, if you substitute it on the left-hand side, give you these particular values, right? So I'm gonna say, but, since m is a positive integer, um, m pi on 6 has to equal only uh, pi, 2 pi, and so on. These ones are okay. So I'm not solving for m pi on 6, I'm trying to solve for m. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 6 on pi. That should cancel everything out for me. So hopefully you can convince yourself that you'll get 6, 12, and so on. These are the values of m, all of them, that will make z to the power of m purely real. But of course I don't want all the values, I just want the smallest value, I think that's what I said, the minimum value there. So therefore I'm just going to write that down the bottom here. The minimum value is the smallest one that I wrote down. The minimum m equals 6. So we'll come back to this result in a second, but for now that's part one. I have solved for m, that's the smallest value, at least I think, that will make z to the m purely real.